All right, so the rising Tea Party King dollar seems to be stopping out gold at bottom. Tax cuts across the board supported by three presidents. Obama, Bill Clinton today, and, of course, George W. Bush, where it all started. So what's all this mean for the precious metals play, gold and silver, and your portfolio? Let's talk to Options Action Distributor Jim Urio, trader at TJM Institutional Services, Tom Lydon, editor at ETF Fund. Jim Urio, are you capitulating on gold? No, I, I think what we're seeing here, and, and I would love to say that the, the precious metal market is applauding good governance. Uh, you know, tax clarity is a big deal. A bunch of economists are raising their forecast for 2011, and I think that's factored into this pullback in gold to a degree. But I think what's a, a more logical way to explain it is that it's a crowded trade. We know that, and we've used that expression a million times. It's the end of the year. The people are probably taking profit on a very profitable trade for 2010, and I think that's why the pullback. Because the fundamental reason for owning gold, I don't think, has changed a ton. We always knew at some point in time they'd come through maybe with some good governance. We didn't know that part, but we knew that a recovery would eventually come. Now, we're looking at 2011, and the, is the gold market saying that there's less need for Fed accommodation going forward? Yes, that's what it's saying. But do we really have confidence that the Fed is going to pull back accommodation just because there's less need for it? That's what we've been worried about all along, and that's the reason we well, ran to gold and silver in the first place. So no I would question. prefer to buy it. Nobody has any real confidence in the Fed. I'll grant you that. Uh, but, Tom, let me go to you on this. Rising interest rates in the Treasury market, which is coming, I think, from better economic growth growth expectations and the tax cuts, isn't that going to weigh down gold and weigh down silver and maybe even weigh down oil? That simple, easy trade, which was like shooting fish in the barrel, is it over? I think Jim's absolutely right. I mean, it might be a little pause, Larry, but all year, every pause was an opportunity to buy a little bit more. I mean, the bottom line from a fundamental standpoint is you've got hundreds of millions of People around the world in emerging market countries that are moving up to the middle class have more money to spend, they're buying gold. And the World Trade Council said the number one reason gold was going up so far this year was money going into ETFs. People today have more access to gold, and with over $65 billion of gold sitting in vaults in London and Switzerland, uh, I don't think we're going to turn this I thing around like anytime these, soon. I don't like these flow reasons. I mean, look, Jim Uriel, there's an interesting wrinkle here. I expected you to be all over this, knowing your trading acumen. Silver and gold precious metals went down this week, but copper and the raw materials index went up. That tells me industrial materials and stocks can do well in a pro-growth environment, but that doesn't mean that gold and silver have to go up. Maybe we've seen the last of the Bernanke QE2. Maybe the tax cuts no. take him out of play. Maybe Dr. Ron <laughs> Paul's going to take him out of play. You heard him on 60 Minutes last week. Do you think we've seen the last of QE2? I don't think we've seen the last of QE2 until he sees some real traction in the real estate market, and that seems to be in the distance to me, too. Are you saying, is there a, a little bit of the gold and silver pullback due to less panic in the air? I believe that's absolutely true. But remember, there was always two reasons. There was the panic reasons because of the devaluing of fiat currencies around the world, but there was also an inflationary aspect of it, um, too, you know, to go along with all the other commodities as well. So the fact that copper is rallying and gold and silver are pulling back... Yeah. Maybe it's just that those trades were a little bit more crowded that's, than the copper trades. But that's non-inflationary growth. Now, look, I know. I do not trust the Fed, okay, and I would like to go back to a king dollar reference to the price of gold so we could have some dollar stability. Okay, I understand it. As would I, but you but and I aren't going to change the way Bernanke's going to do well, things, and you know, he might not want a king we're dollar. We're going to operate through Dr. Ron Paul. He's going to be our guy. But Tom Lydon, I'll give, give you the last word. It just seems like in the last several weeks, maybe since the election, maybe since the euro debt problem got off the front, pages the atmosphere of buy dollars buy gold buy over it seems like that has cooled quite a bit even maybe the oil trade is cooled. i'll give you the last word tom sure well part of that larry is the stock market's moving yeah. and you're starting to get yes. a little bit of euphoria you know this this santa cudlow rally is in place this is good it, this it is, is good. it's, this a, it's is all the good tea party king dollar <laughs> cudlow tax cutting rally it is. And, and I think if we continue to see this in the closing weeks, as people are rounding out their portfolios, hey, if they don't have commodities in there, they're surely going to be buying. All right, gentlemen, we're going to leave it there. Have a great holiday weekend, Jim Urio and Tom Lydon coming up.